Hi guys, this will be the first video covering the MP3 player part of my electronic thing. The GPS isn't finished, but I thought it'd be fun to skip to the MP3 player part, so I'll add that now. And it looks the same, but if you remember, there's a board underneath. This is an audio codec decoder board containing the VLSI VS1003 chip. For this video, I'll mess with the order of things and just skip to it working. There's a sign test at the start that I haven't removed, so mind your ears here. I can show that the MP3 player is implemented without wrecking the GPS program. I still have to power cycle because I haven't got a proper menu system to exit out of one and into the other. The MP3 still needs some cleaning up. It wants a file browser, a spectrum analyzer, and volume controls. I bought a couple of card-based MP3 players uh, just in hope to find the same chip in them. The first one has an FM transmitter to transmit to the radio in your car. The next one is a cassette adapter where the memory card goes inside the cassette and it magnetically couples to the tape heads inside the player. Okay, the FM transmitter one works. I'm listening to it on the radio of a Sony Walkman. And here I was just surprised that I couldn't detune or interfere with it in any way with my body. Uh, very stable for something so small running at around 100 megahertz. The infrared remote control had a charged battery but didn't work out of the box, so that was the only disappointing thing. After breaking the Walkman lid to fit the cassette adapter in, I couldn't get it working at all. It only got one song, one chance. Uh, it couldn't play the same song the other one could. Uh, in order to free up another I.O. pin on the microcontroller, I've used a resistor capacitor power on reset circuit. Its output is still sent through the original inverter to provide a nice square edge for power on reset. So that's one less pin used by the LCD hardware, which is in green. In pink, the SPI hardware for the SD card, SD data in, out, clock and chip select. In yellow, the additional pins for the MP3 decoder chip. It shares the hardware SPI bus with the SD card. And in white, port RB11 is the spare pin that I have left at the moment. I've done my best here to hide the shame of using a shield in an electronics project, but this extra stuff is to make my own and replace it. The bare chip and crystal there are from my first board, which I'll assume I wrecked uh, by making a mistake with the orientation of the connector. The next board still in the packet is to deliberately wreck and pull some parts off. Maybe I'll just use that chip for the next board. I have bare chips on the way from eBay, but waiting for them would require patience that I don't have. The crystals are rather odd frequency, so I want the crystal and the chip off this board, and here's one way to get them off, uh, presuming I don't care about the actual board at all. If the chip's light enough, it'll never come off because the surface tension of the wet solder will keep it there, so there's a time to start tapping the board. I have to drive for an hour to access real SMD stations, so this will have to do. With the chip removed, this board will still be useful to check against the example in the data sheet. It'll also make a good template for the drill holes of my new board. Chip on board, not what I wanted to see, it doesn't tell me much. I've already uh, removed some useless mechanical parts in the cassette adapter. It had a few sprockets rolling around doing nothing. Uh, so it does have a chip, an SD socket LiPo battery. Um, one chip must be doing everything. It looks like a little preamp or something up the other end. I couldn't find any data on the chip itself, uh, which is a bit of a shame. If it really is the fifth week of 2012, I'm still surprised. Single chip, so it's not the one I'm interested in because the VS1003 can't read an SD card itself. I need a 3.5mm stereo socket for my new board, so I might as well just grab the best one of these. I've got a couple of QFP breakout boards on the way. If they help, I'll have to mount components closer to the pads that they're leading out, but we'll see. It's also possible to just dead bug it and set stuff in resin. This is a present I got from a friend a while ago. 
This is a pretty raw debugging screen, but it is doing the business. The moving asterisk shows that the file is seeking. The data request pin zero most of the time shows that I'm keeping the buffer full, which is important. Aside from the physical stuff, the hardest part about getting the chip working was probably uh, configuring hardware SPI routines, uh, which I ended up doing manually, so I'm using hardware to talk to the SD card and manually bit banging to the chip. So here's what the SPI clock and data lines look like sending the byte value 53 hex. The row of X's on the screen here represent data. I'm actually printing out everything, but replacing anything that can't be uh, represented in ASCII with an X. With a 32 byte buffer, you don't get much time playing after pulling the SD card out. Pretty sure I could do something to resume there when you put it back in, but again, uh, it's pretty early days.